The shallow seas around our coastline are home to productive ecosystems which provide essential habitats for marine life. They also help to maintain a stable climate by drawing down carbon from the atmosphere. However, we are losing these ecosystems at an alarming rate due to human impacts such as pollution, coastal development and damage from irresponsible boating and industry. To help address these issues, Cornwall Council have been working with the University of Exeter and Natural Capital Solutions to gain a better understanding of marine carbon in Cornwall. This project calculates the amount of carbon stored within marine habitats and uses advanced GIS mapping techniques to generate computer images of their locations. Alongside this, Natural Capital Solutions have been exploring blue carbon investment opportunities and the collaboration has also been joined by Falmouth Harbour Commissioners who are working to reduce negative impacts to the seabed from boating. By working together, we aim to protect and restore our seabed habitats and the life found within them. At the University of Exeter, we're studying seagrass ecosystems and the animals that live within them. Seagrass meadows are magnets for marine species which go there to shelter, to spawn and to feed. They're also important for the absorption and retention of carbon from the atmosphere. For the last three years, we've been working with Cornwall Council to research the carbon cycling process within seagrass beds in the Fallon Helford Special Area of Conservation, and more recently in Mounts Bay. Measuring the productivity of seagrasses can show us how much new organic matter is being generated by a meadow. The growth of seagrass actively pulls carbon dioxide from the seawater and converts it to organic carbon via photosynthesis. Some of this will accumulate in the sediment, but most of it enters the ocean ecosystem. We can measure growth by marking plants at their base with a small pin and returning to collect them and see how far this hole has travelled. If we know the mass of new tissue added in this time, we can calculate how much carbon has been generated and scale this to calculate the productivity of the whole seagrass bed. Marine carbon stocks are estimated to be roughly 10 times greater than those on land, and this has recently been termed blue carbon. 10% of this blue carbon is stored in seagrass ecosystems globally. We can study the amount of blue carbon retained in an area by taking samples in the sediment in cylindrical cores. For this part of our work, we were supported by the Ocean Conservation Trust, who collected samples using a research vessel. By looking down through the cores of sediment, we can estimate things like how much carbon is there, what its source was, and historical rates of carbon accumulation. For this project, sediment cores from across the width of Mounts Bay seagrass meadow were collected down to one metre for carbon stock analysis. The cores are cut into sections and split into smaller samples, and then weighed. We burn the sediment in a blast furnace which removes the organic matter and re-weigh them so we can estimate the organic carbon content of each core after scaling. These values are multiplied to the size of the meadow to provide us with an estimate of the carbon stock of the seagrass bed. To help combat the loss of our seagrass meadows, we want to reintroduce plants to places where they will thrive. To do this, we've been making computer models of areas that might be suitable for restoration in Plymouth, the Solent, and now around Cornwall. Seagrass grows in shallow areas because the plants need plenty of light to grow. Our modelling shows it favours muddy sediment, or a mix of mud and gravel, and that big influxes of nitrate and phosphorus or sediments deposited from rivers are bad for growth. In the UK, seagrass is used to water temperatures below 20 degrees Celsius and warmer sea temperatures can be detrimental to its health. Our models combine data incorporating all of these factors and then use statistics to find the best local combination of conditions for growth. We then look for other areas that have these conditions where we recommend seagrass restoration work should take place. Falmouth Harbour value the marine life we have within our waters and we are reducing our impacts on the environment to work alongside conservation efforts. Our partnership with Cornwall Council has helped develop our understanding of marine ecosystems, their importance and how best to protect them. We have removed 11 traditional boat moorings that were having a localised impact on seagrass beds and we are working with the University of Exeter and sea search divers to monitor the regeneration. 
We have also been working in partnership with the Ocean Conservation Trust to highlight areas of seagrass with marker buoys and encourage recreational boaters not to anchor in these areas. There is an incredibly positive focus on the study of marine habitats and their conservation in Cornwall and we have a great collaboration of organisations on board with the work. Cornwall Council is committed to supporting innovative research into our seas to help protect them. We want their habitats to continue to perform their vital ecological roles as both blue carbon stores and as sanctuaries for marine life. To do this, we will continue to gather data on their importance and we will encourage investment in their conservation and restoration into the future.